Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 6th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm going to provide for you an update on global temperatures, particularly as given and reported by the Copernicus European Observatory, European Climate Observatory. And what Copernicus has found is that global surface temperatures for July of 2018 were the third hottest on record. And here is a visualization of global temperature anomalies and European temperature anomalies as provided <clears throat> by Copernicus for the month of July. <clears throat> now, as we can see, Europe was much warmer than normal, particularly in the Scandinavian region, but many regions of the globe, in fact, most regions of the globe experienced warmer than normal temperatures with a few noted exceptions, particularly in the North Atlantic, parts of the high Arctic, parts of central Siberia, and some regions of Antarctica. But overall, global picture was much much warmer than normal according to the copernicus monitor now what Coper copernicus found was that temperatures for the period of july were about 0 0.4 degrees celsius warmer than the 1981 to 2010 average which was already a warmer than normal period of time and as, as I said before, July was the third warmest on record, but there was an insignificant margin separating the third warmest month this year from the second warmest month in July of 2017. And notably, July of 2018 was about 0 0.1 degrees Celsius cooler than July of 2016 which was also the hottest year overall on record. Now, we can see that global temperatures have hit a new high during recent years, particularly since 2015. And this is in a scale starting in 1980, which is again already a warmer than normal year. And what we have seen is that peak values occurred during the El Nino year of 2016 and have since receded as temperatures in the equatorial Pacific have cooled off. And this tends to happen following peak warm years during El Nino. But the next El Nino year with these global temperatures so far elevated is likely to provide a, a new challenge to the record hot temperatures globally that were achieved during 2016. Now, during 2018, we have experienced some very warm land temperatures, record hot land temperatures, and a number of severe heat waves across the world during Northern Hem Hemisphere su summer. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more, but before I do, I'd like to just provide for you some of the stunning vis visualizations of global temperature increases since the 1880s. And this, this visualization is provided by Axios, which has taken National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration data and color-coded it. As you can see in the shift from blue to orange, global temperatures have changed considerably. Now, another graphic that has been circulating the, the web is, is this one, another visualization of annual global temperature change since 1850. And we should note the shift here from blue to red during recent years. The Axios measure shows temperatures based on month, and this measure that has been circulating the web shows annual temperature change based on year. Now, another measure of 
of temperature change, and I'm just going to provide this as as a, a finishing point here, it is global ocean temperatures. And one major measure that we have seen recently is a new record for sea surface temperature at the Scripps Oceanography, Ocean, o, um, Oceanography Observatory at the Scripps Pier at Scripps Station in California. And these records are are unprecedented in the entire period since temperatures have been recorded at the Scripps Pier, so since 1916. And as you can see, the recent high record high temperatures have continued over recent days. One signal of human-caused climate change that we like to keep an eye on is overall sea surface temperature warming and sea surface temperature anomalies. And it's worth noting that sea surface temperatures in the Pacific have been much warmer than normal recently. And in part, this is a signal of sea ice loss in the Arctic, which according to recent science has shown that temperatures tend to warm rather rapidly in response to Arctic sea ice loss across the Pacific. So as sea ice, we lose sea ice in the Arctic, temperatures across the Pacific have tended to increase. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on Southern California, just so you can see the above normal sea surface temperatures that are currently occurring presently off the U.S. West Coast. Now, these much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures have also helped to fuel record heat and wildfires in the region in association with strong high pressure systems and upper level ridge patterns that have continued to assert. So Copernicus itself is just one of a few global monitors that we keep a look at. We'll be also looking forward to the NASA global temperature measures for July of 2018 to provide a more in-depth analysis of net temperature change since the 1880s and overall spatial temperature change for July relative to past temperatures. So thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.